Hi, Rod Fleming in the Philippines here, and I do hope you're all well. We're not so well, but meantime, thank you very much to those who are supporting us, those who have become Patreon patrons, those who have sent us help by other means. Please continue to do so. All the places you can go, you can join Patreon. I've got a cheap tier in there now for those who really can't afford, you know, the, the standard tier. I've got, uh, there will be merchant, there will be things available on the, 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 uh, the basic tier, which will not be, you know, to make it more attractive for you. There you can go and buy me a coffee or several coffees at once. You can go to Kofi, same thing really. You can just send money by PayPal, rodafleming at gmail.com. Or you can go to the GoFundMe, please put something in there. Much or as little as you like. Now, another thing that you can do, and this is really, really useful and hopeful, helpful, is that when you look below this video, you'll see a button that says share, right? So if you press that, you'll see a whole bunch of um, social media icons come up. And if you click on them, then you can share this video with all of your friends, with everybody you know, everyone that's on your list all of your followers on Facebook and Twitter and all that. And this really, really helps. Hi folks, Rod Fleming in the Philippines here. And my darling wife, Sam, thinks that this makes me look younger. So, <clears throat> in order to keep the peace, I have promised to make this video with it still on. So you may laugh as much as you like. I am not a monster. I have a sense of humor. Anyway, I want to talk today... I was, I was, I was moved to think about this because... We had an interesting conversation with someone who couldn't manage to stay polite, but never mind, who suggested that somehow capitalism is the cause of feminism and BLM and all these other things. That's not what I've argued. The person absolutely misunderstood my point of view, which or my thesis, which is that the underlying philosophies of these movements, feminism, BLM, all of the SJWs, the core theories of LGB+, all of that, they're all essentially Marxist. They're all basically derived from the Communist Manifesto. And if you read that, if you read Marx and uh, Lenin, especially Marx and Engels on the uh, Communist Manifesto, you'll see that the things that are said by the leaders of these organizations are straight. They're lifted straight from the Marxist playbook. It's pure communism. And indeed, some of them say, you know, and I quote, I'm a trained communist. I mean, that's all you really need to know. However, what, one of the things that Marx did actually very well indeed is that he was able to see how capitalism would develop if it was left unchecked, if uh, insufficient legal measures were not put in place to control it. And what he predicted was a form of corporate capitalism, which he describes quite at length in, in Capital, his famous book, which is a heavy read, so I'm not going to quote from it here. But essentially, he did foresee this. And I want to quote now from, our, to look at an article that was published in 2017 by uh, a researcher, uh, an economic scientist called Luigi Zingales. Okay? Now, he wrote a paper which I'll come to but his uh, one of the examples he gave which is a very good one is that in the 80, 1980s and 1990s Blockbuster we all remember Blockbuster modernized the movie rental business um, it offered more movies than its rivals it used computers to better manage the inventory it used uh, its stores were extremely bright and friendly and they were always you know the same wherever you went the Blockbuster was exactly the same with things were laid out in the same way you could easily find what you're looking for um, and it was became the global leader. It was international, and it had over three thousand, actually three thousand thousand four hundred stores globally. And then uh, Netflix happened, and Blockbuster went bankrupt in twenty ten. Now Zingales mentions the Blockbuster story as an example of how the economy ought to work. He says this is the right way of doing things. A company has a great idea; it's innovative, and for a while it produces a competitive advantage and then later on a new innovator comes along and pushes it aside right and it becomes leader and it just rolls over it keeps rolling over and while I disagree with the the values of corporate capitalism at that level this is actually sustainable 
What Zingales fears, however, is that he was talking then about the US economy, but this has really become the part of the, the uh, symptomatic of the, the global economy now. And he says that it might be coming to what he calls the Medici cycle, named for the powerful family of medieval Florence who were, you know, they really were very powerful. Uh, and their motto, well, they didn't create it, but it was a, ascribed to them, was, and I quote, money to get power and power to protect money, right? And this very much explained or described the attitude of the uh, Medici family, who, by the way, were generally speaking, rather philanthropic. They were not uh, typical Renaissance leaders. Most (laughs) Renaissance leaders were really not so nice. Um, They were pretty fair-minded and they ran a a good shop, you know. The people of Florence, generally speaking, liked the Medici. They did fall out a couple of times, but even then they they had him back, you know. (coughs) Anyway, the point (coughs) that Zingales is making here is concentration, which is the way that not only do capitalist, corporate capitalist companies get bigger, right? They become more concentrated. And they do this because they're operating the Medici cycle. Um, At the moment, we have all-time corporate highs, profit highs, but very little actual investment. Um, The number of new businesses being founded has declined. The number of new growth startups has has risen, yet these firms struggle to scale because they can't get bigger. And the reason is they're being closed out because of that second part about that, of that Medici quote, right? Money to protect, sorry, power to protect money. So what actually happens is that as this goes ahead, the private sector becomes less competitive, not more so. And that's because the big companies are making lots of money, but they're not investing much, and they're using their power to fend off newer challengers. And a good example would be Facebook. Facebook has used uh, its financial clout repeatedly to shut down competition usually by buying it, right? And actually, you're watching this on YouTube, and this is exactly what happened to YouTube. Google took it over because it thought that's going to be useful and it's going to be a challenge to us, so we'll buy it. And that way we will reshape it, remodel it, so that it's actually providing uh, added value for us, not for itself. And this is compounded because in the modern world, these are so powerful, these corporates, corporations are so powerful and so big, so well moneyed, that they actually start to rival states. You know, there there are many states today who have far less wealth um, than Facebook or Google, far less than Google certainly, or YouTube, Amazon. They, they, they They are actually dominant over actual states. And that's the first time this has ever happened. Um, Marx didn't really predict that, but I think he would have not been surprised. Let's put it that way. So what's actually happened is that if you remember that old little, you know, you used to see rings made of it, and it was a serpent eating its tail. And and this is exactly what's happening here. Uh, capital, corporate capitalism has become so powerful that it's become political capitalism, and now it's eating itself. You know, it, its ultimate end in its ultimate purpose is to completely destroy any other kind of capitalism and to establish, wait for it, a controlled state, a state which is controlled not by, you know, uh, elected elected uh, legislators, elected through the ballot box, but a state which is controlled by the investors in the companies, <clears throat> who are basically not recountable to anyone. And that's where we're heading now. So when people say, oh, it's capitalism that's funding feminism, no, this is not actually capitalism. The capitalism, as classically seen, requires a, an element of competition. The whole point with the, the current form is this uh, Medici cycle form, is that they want to completely eradicate all competition, you know? And wherever they go, what happens is wages go down, they make loads of money, but that money leaves the local economy. 
doesn't stay there. You know, when a small business sets up, whatever, a tire depot in your little town, then you can pretty much bet that, you know, yeah, they'll borrow money from the bank, that might go somewhere else, the interest on it. But the fact is that the money that's generated there, the wages spent by the locals, that's all just going to come back into the local community. Um, I could give you a specific example, which is my father was a, a Ford main dealer, sold new Ford cars, and at that time the t town I lived in was a, a very um, successful, dynamic and prominent fishing town. And what would happen is that every two years, because that was the normal cycle, every two years each skipper would buy a new car and his mate would buy a second-hand car that was two years old. So basically they were moving it down. So all that money that was being made from fishing was staying in the community. Um, my father's business, he supported people, he paid their wages. Uh, several of them, quite a few, were actually housed. They got their houses as part of their, their package. And that all of that remained right there in the town. That just doesn't happen when you have people like Amazon doesn't the enough of the money generated by any activity on Amazon well it doesn't matter if somebody like me tries to sell through Amazon Amazon will take enough such that in net terms money is leaving our economy and going to Amazon right and Amazon is not paying tax on this we know this Amazon basically avoids all taxes and this is all always the same the the big high high-tech companies, the tech, the, the, the tech overlords, they don't pay taxes because state governments are actually afraid of them, right? They think that if Google wanted to, it could bring down a government. It could bring a big, big government. Um, they've run into trouble with some particularly strong-willed leaders, but in general, these companies have been very successful at getting their own way. And maybe they do it through uh, payoffs, Maybe they do it through straightforward threats. You know, if you make us pay for uh, using other people's material, then we'll just stop operating in your territory. That sort of thing. You know, these are uh, the techniques and the tactics of the bully. This is not legitimate capitalism. This is not competition. You know, capitalism depends on innovation and competition. That's what uh, this chap, Singalis, is basically saying. That was the purpose behind his mentioning uh, Blockbuster, innovation, competition. You, somebody comes along with a better idea, competes with you, and you go down. Or you get better. You come back with a new idea, right? That's how capitalism is actually meant to work. But because these companies have become so powerful, government is afraid now to put in place laws that would contain them. And, and within the companies themselves, they are effectively totalitarian states. I mean, if you work for Disney, you're not allowed to say anything that is in any way at odds with the company line. Otherwise, you'll be fired. It's that simple. Uh, you're actually not allowed to think anything that is not in accordance with the company line. You know, you'll be sent on ridiculous uh, unconscious bias courses and various other total nonsense. And if you don't go, You'll be fired. If you don't go, and, and, and or if you don't score well when you're on them, that's you, you're finished, you're out. So these companies are actually, they have put in place exactly, exactly what we all fear from a communist state, you know? They have become totalitarian within their own companies. They don't stand for any debate. They don't stand for any uh, controversy. If you don't like it, you're out. And, you know, American companies particularly, I have to say, US companies are notorious for their terrible, terrible attitude towards their employees. And I'm sorry, you Americans might not, not like it, but the fact is that they are brutally ruthless. Uh, and they come to places like Europe and they're horrified. <laughs> you know, workers actually have a right to holidays. Paid holidays, oh my God, that sort of thing. They can't. They really can't cope with it. And what we're seeing now is the movement of huge amounts, huge amounts of 
capital into the coffers of these super large but still private companies, actual companies, you know, and this has caused them to be now as powerful as states, and it's only a matter of time before they actually become states, you know, so, you know, America would actually become Disneyland, talk about that for a moment, uh, that actually makes this look even more apposite, doesn't it? So that any Looney Tunes, and you don't have any chance to vote them out, because the whole point is that People who actually work in these companies, by and large, are not the people who make decisions. Only the major shareholders actually make decisions. You know? And you have to be bloody major to, to influence boardroom policy. There's nothing democratic about a large company. This is not like a family business where everybody might have a, a word about it. We're talking about... We're basically talking about communism, but it's actually masquerading as cap capitalism. And it is, it is. Within these companies, nobody owns anything. You know, they're all, everything is owned by the company. You don't own a damn thing. It's not like you go to work with your own tools, you know, and if you, you want to go another job, you, I'll take my own tools with me, pal. You can't do that. You're sworn into lifelong, lifelong binding contracts that prevent you from talking about the things that go on in these companies. This is communism. This is just communism. And what this is what I mean about the, the snake who eats its tail. Capitalism has come round and it started eating its tail. And the result, once again, is totalitarianism. And that is communism. It's absolutely communism. They're all basically the same. What it is, is a, the, the, the complete destruction of freedom, freedom of speech, in you know, you, you can't just say what you think. You have to think what they say you think. And that is true across the board. These people run um, extremely punitive regimes to ensure that everything conforms to what they want it to conform to. Everybody thinks the way they think. You know, it's new think. It's doublespeak. It's all of this stuff. It's exactly what... Everybody thought, oh, that's, that's the fear that communism is, might turn into and does. And what's happened is that corporate capitalism, not your regular run-of-the-mill capitalism, market capitalism, but corporate capitalism has actually got there. It's basically setting up a bunch of, of dictatorships within which you have absolutely no freedom whatsoever. And what they're doing now is they're moving to try to make these uh, dictatorships completely, completely exclusive so that you, you have nowhere else to go. You know, if you were, if they decide somebody at, uh, like it happened to me, somebody at Quora decided that I didn't like, they didn't like me talking about autogynophilia, so huh, that's it, let's get rid of them. That's the sort of thing that's going to happen. That's, that's going to be across the board. And you're already seeing this on platforms like YouTube. And even worse, you're seeing how governments are actually asking these corporate platforms to do what they want, to censor the views that they don't like. And so co the two are becoming closer and closer and closer and more tightly entwined so that in the end there will be no separating them. The state and the corporate capitalists will be the same thing. And there what you have is a new form of communism where you have no choice, you have no rights, you don't even have the right to think for yourself. And that's where we're going. And unfortunately, that is what we are going to have to deal with. You know? Um, personally, you know, I'm, I'm stuck in the Philippines just now, which is in some ways pleasant, in other ways not. But, in all honesty, I would say to governments around the world, just ban them. Don't allow Amazon inside your territory. Don't allow ABA inside your territory. Encourage local uh, alternatives... Don't, and certainly don't, enjoy, don't allow Facebook to operate inside your territory. Just don't allow it. Ban it. Same for Twitter. Absolutely encourage local alternatives. But the fact is, these companies are operating on an agenda that is wholly corrupt. Wholly corrupt. And its only purpose 
is to serve them, right? And to make it easier for them to take all of the money that is remaining on the planet. Every last cent. That's what we're faced with today. So, yeah, I agree. People who go to work for these companies don't think they're communists, but that's where they're going. And it remains the fact that movements like BLM, various SJWs, uh, all of these things, they are actually run by people who are trained as communists. The trouble is they're a little bit dim and they don't actually see that capitalism isn't what they used to think it was. They used to think that capitalism was all these dreadful, uh, dreadful white men exploiting other people, which it never was. And they're all like, let's be friendly to these tech companies because they've got all these lovely SJW policies in place. And the fact is, the tech companies will have you, and they will destroy you, they will crush you, if you let them. See you later, and I'm going to take this thing off now, because it's fucking weird. Anyway, Sam's a case sometimes. Take care, bye. <laughs>